Good afternoon, everyone, and happy St. Patrick's Day. This is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com. Today is Sunday. It is March 17th. It is 3.49 p.m. Eastern Time, and this is the weekly futures market outlook. For this week, let's begin with the mini Dow. This is the weekly chart, and as you can see, not as strong of a week, and we did not actually trade above this prior high this week so we maintained the range from last week but pretty much we're setting up with an inside price action activity which means that going into this week we have a couple of hours till the open uh, and uh, if this week we're going to be trading above the 25 950 to 980 area there is a very strong possibility that we're going to try to attempt to take out the highs into the 26 uh, to 40 zone. We're trading very close. In fact, on uh, Friday, we came to test the 25,900 area, but we still have not taken this week's high. So we had a little bit of relative weakness uh, built into the e mini Dow. One of the reasons was obviously Boeing. And uh, this week, uh, we're gonna have to see if the e mini Dow is gonna remain a little bit weaker or if it's gonna uh, strengthen uh, throughout the week. Uh, so at the way we are trading right now, like I said, if we break above this high, the 970 zone, we have a very good chance of going back into the 26K. Obviously, we're not that far away from that area from Friday's close. And uh, also to tap onto these highs right here into the 26,300. A blast over 26,300 is also going to bring a buying pressure that may take the price back to 26,640. I'm not bearish for this upcoming week at all. Uh, if we should come in and if we should break below, well, the first test is going to come from the daily chart here, but if we should close below uh, 25,650, I will start being moderately cautious, which means that I'm not going to be bearish at that point. Uh, my line of the sand for the bearish signal would come way under the 25,450 uh, 450 area. As long as the price is still going to uh, hold into this area, uh, we may still get a push higher. The way we are trading right now into the e mini Dow, so we had an up move following the uh, futures roll into the new June contract. We had a move higher, stabilizing, move higher, stabilizing, and we had the move higher here. Again, the 25,950 area, the area that we tested on Friday, it's also positioned into a minor resistance from these prior lows from mid-February all the way into March, into the first days of March. Now, if we trade above 300, I think there's a very strong chance we're gonna go back into the 200 and 250 area. And I really like the trajectory higher. Like I said, I'm not bearish at this point. It, and this is a very difficult area to be bearish in because first of all, we have the support level at the 25, 200 zone and the 25K. So this is, this is an enormous, amount of support right here that is actually it's a uh, it's it, it's a very strong area that is deriving from multiple factors uh and we have prior price action we have dynamic support from the moving averages etc etc so the current structure of the chart promotes an uptrending uh uptrending motion for the following week uh, for as far as the hourly chart goes, going into immediate price action for Sunday, like I said, we had quadruple witching option expiration on Friday, and I think the market is going to need a little bit more time on Monday to digest these prior tests and these areas before moving in either direction. So uh, I like the fact that we pretty much had a really nice blast going into 11 o'clock, and then pretty much the price has quieted down 
pull back into an area support, tapping into the 20 simple moving average at the 850 zone. And shortly after tapping into the 20, it came in with a daily buy trigger into the end of the trading session. So I think the market is going to need a little bit more time, at least 24 hours for the market for it to calibrate, for the price to calibrate before actually possibly continuing higher because I think that we are poised to continue higher into this following week. So like I said, the bearish signal for me would come under uh, under 25K and that's going to be okay. Yeah, we're going to be looking for a steeper move back as long as the weekly chart and I'm going to go back to the daily here and switch it to the weekly. As long as this weekly chart here, uh, you know, holds this 34 simple moving average and the 10 simple moving average, uh, that is also coming, uh, this, this support here is not only coming from a moving average, but it's coming from prior price action resistance that uh, right now creates that minor support level for the price to break through higher again. So uh, for throughout this week, my line in sand is going to be the 970. We pushed through 970, uh, basically through yesterday, through Friday's highs. I don't think we're going to have an issue following through higher. But non nonetheless, uh, the m and Dow has a little bit weaker chart structure. And I'm going to go to Russell right now. And uh, Russell as well uh, had a little bit weaker price action. And we're going to start here with the weekly chart. You can see that the charts are somewhat similar uh, in terms of uh, prior week. And then we had this last week, uh, last week's bar. So we still have some unresolved issues from these highs here from last year, October through December. Uh, once we're going to trade over 1570, uh, we still have an area of turbulence into the 80s, between 80s and 90s. And I don't think that if we dissolve that area, we're not going to push higher towards 1600. And then the trend is going to continue to 1650, 1750 plus. Uh, and short term, uh, for shorter term, um, so Russell at the end of the day had a little bit of steeper pullback to retest the support from the overnight trading session, not really tapping onto the support, but coming very close into that prior area. And then it popped a little bit uh, back into um, back into the 1560, which is the core of the whole range that uh, was developed in on Friday in the overnight trading session and in the New York trading session. So with that being said, you can see here that we're pretty much stabilizing and we are creating a range at the 1545 level. As long as this range at the 1545 level is going to hold, uh, we will be looking for a break over 1570. And this break is going to pretty much have a nice continuation higher into these prior highs of 1600. So like I said, there is going to be a turbulence area and you could see it here on the daily chart. Turbulence area is going to come from these prior lows that are creating uh, minor resistance at the 80 zone back into the 90 here with this descending, uh, not descending, I'm sorry, flat 200 simple moving average. Uh, but the price is trading below the 200 moving average. Once the price is going to start inching up and actually closing above these prior highs and the 200 symbol moving average on the daily, we will see more price progression towards the 50. And the next price target is going to be all the way into the 1667 area. So this is for Russell. Let's move on right now into NASDAQ. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at the weekly chart of Nasdaq. Let me just clear these drawings here. Okay, so weekly chart, Nasdaq super strong, taking into consideration that Russell and the Dow were trading somewhere along these lines within this prior uh, prior weeks uh, high and low. So we're trading in the lower fifty percent. Uh, area of that prior bar well not nasdaq nasdaq <laughs> excuse me very bullish trading over the 72 <coughs> excuse me 72 20 zone which was a huge area of resistance uh that's actually a huge area of coming from this prior pivot high from last year uh in uh um, um 
uh, in uh, uh, March. Uh, and also from these cluster highs all the way in November, we traded through these areas and uh, we actually have a very nice bullish price trajectory higher for 7,500 and even back into these highs that we were uh, that we just set on uh, uh, on in November back into the 7600 and is back into the 70, 76 and 7700. So we do have a lot of void and as you can see we're gaining traction because we just died just at these highs. Now going back to Russell and Dow, we need to erase the same similar areas that uh, Nasdaq just sliced through them and once uh, and once uh, Russell and the Dow, uh, will uh, breach these areas and actually start moving higher, we're going to see uh, possibly even more in sync price action from NASDAQ and from the m and &E &E So uh, my bias for, uh, for this week is definitely going to be higher um, for long. So I'm going to be looking for a pullback bias. Very nice bull sandwich with, uh, uh, with the price exploding above the 73.25 level getting into uh getting into the 7350 zone 7350 was also an area of resistance and uh it is getting ready for a projection higher into the 7400 this is the next price target area 7400 and 7425 so it has a really nice uh tradable void moving forward onto the daily chart and even onto the weekly chart the charts look extremely good for uh for a progression higher all right, let's move on to the a mini &E SMP. Again, full, beautiful 180 rotation that uh, we can see on the weekly chart. And we do have a tradable void all the way into the 2878. Clear support from last week into the 27, uh, 2726. And uh, very nice, uh, very nice uh, price target on it into the uh, into these prior highs from January highs and then back into the October highs here into the 29th. So we have two very nice targets for uh, uh, for the m and &E S&P to start moving higher. As you can see right here, we had a really tough area to digest into the 28, 26 to uh, 2830. The fact that we're still stabilizing at these highs, it means that we're just erasing these prior pivot highs and getting ready for a motion higher, so I'm not bearish at all into the mini &E SMP, and I think the traje trajectory is going to be higher. All right, let's move on to gold. All right, there are a couple of things here that I wanted to highlight, and first off, I'm going to start with the weekly chart. So first off, what we had here was a pullback, so legged out of this trade was a beautiful trade. We captured some pretty nice moves to the upside and then came the pullback we trailed out of the trade we waited for another uh, move higher we did capture a little bit of this one as well uh, we actually our entry was into the 94 and our second target was into uh, the 1310 area we had further targets but we trailed out of the trade and now I'm looking for another entry opportunity. So as far as the weekly goes, we still have a weekly progression higher. So uh, longer term traders uh, are still invested. And I think there is a high interest for a push higher. The fact that we're stabilizing again into the 1300, this is a good sign that the price may be ready to continue higher. So a couple of weeks ago, we did have this trigger and uh, it continued higher so the parameters have not changed uh have not changed so the risk for uh for gold uh is still into the 1280 as long as 1280 is not violated this trade is still looking good for uh continuation higher now when it comes to the daily chart there are a couple of things that i want to mention here first off if you look at the overall chart structure i know it's a little bit so take a step back uh, look at the support level that we have into the 80s, right? And look at the resistance level that we have here into the 1306. You could actually look at this pattern. You could say, yeah, you know what? This is and looks very much like a head and shoulder pattern where this is the right shoulder, this is the left shoulder, and this is the head here, okay? Not really defined, but actually with two highs right here. Uh, but anyways, this is what I see on this pattern. So as long as 
you, the problem is this low right here and how this low is going to be digested because this low is creating selling pressure at this point between 1310 and 1305. So as long as this area is not going to be digested, the price is not going to push through that level. I don't think that we're going to have a chance for a continuation higher for this week. What I'm going to be watching this week, if we're going to break above and again, if we're going to break above uh, the 1311 and I think we have to have patience I think a daily buy is not going to cut it this time because it may be a little bit deceiving we need to see the price trade above the 1310 to 1312 the risk for this trade in this case is still going to be the 1290 okay so it's going to be a little bit of increased risk here for the swing trader but this this is the way the chart is setting up once we're going to break above the 13 uh 13 12 area 10 to 12 like i said we need to see a really good digestion here for about two to three points or so we may be getting ready for a progression higher with a price target into the 20s uh and then the next target into the 13 uh 1330 area and then we will see if we can have uh enough juice to continue back into the 1340s and 1350s but i, I think that uh if so the clear signal for me uh, for the swing portion of this trade is going to come over 1312. So I need to see a 1312 print. I need to see, see the price trade above the 1310. And the risk, the, init the initial risk that I will apply for this trade is going to be into the 1290. And I'm going to be looking for follow through all the way into the 40s, 30, 40s, and 50s. Uh, I just want to put it down a little bit here uh, uh, and uh, put the hourly here. So as you can see here, uh, you know, it had a little base breakout. Once it revisit the 95, the price uh, really, uh, this 200 SMA really held uh, the support level here for gold and it really pushed it a little bit higher. Now we're getting the 1300 support level. You get to see that I have quite few, uh, quite a few alerts here as well. So going into next week if you want to take let's say uh, a trade that would possibly possibly punch in a little bit higher i will look still and more aggressively you could start legging in let's say with a quarter of position or half the position into the 1306 and add the other half or at least three quarters of it uh into um the 1311 or 1312 area, 1312 area, okay? And to possible, so at the time, you know, of this uh, of this trigger into the 0607, you could actually use 1300, or if you want to use a whole entire position, um, you could lag in here and you could have two stops, one stop below the 1299 level and half the stop below the 1280 level. So if you're getting the punch in, you know, you're going to get stopped down on the first half of the trade. And then once it gets back lower and if it should set set up again, you could add the other half back in with a tighter stop. So that's my take on gold right now. All right, let's move on to natural gas and let's take it to the weekly. All right, to the weekly chart, we had a weekly reversal, which also... Uh, below the 200 simple moving average so this it was quite a little bit of bearish price action we trailed out of our natural gas trade uh but i'm still stocking to see if there would be a uh, there would be an opportunity here into into this trade so i need to see it develop a little bit more so far uh if we're gonna get a trigger over 2.86 uh actually yeah 2.86 is going to be my trigger 2.86 we can apply a risk of 2.74 uh yeah you can apply a risk under 2.75 uh and we could see a target into the 290 to a first target in 290 it has a lot of um uh, i would say uh, a lot against it right now right here because it's into a lot of uh, a lot of resistance plus you have the descending 10 exponential so uh we're gonna have to see the more it coils around the 200 simple moving average i think the more it's gonna gain a little bit of strength so natural gas i'm gonna continue to watch it on the weekly uh on the weekly charts 
Uh, and I'm going to be today, so this week, if we trade above last week's high, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, about, uh, yeah, last week's high, uh, it's going to draw my attention. All right, got received a lot of uh, emails from you guys from uh, in regards to the 30-year bond. 30-year uh, bond is still very much sideways. Uh, on Friday, it had a really nice daily rotation a bit higher, testing the resistance area back here into the 146, uh, 146 uh, uh, 20 zone. Uh, to me, it's not really setting up as, uh, you know, as great as I would like to. So uh, we had a trigger already, but I didn't see the real progression back into the 147. Um, if you were in this trade, I would definitely trade it on a weekly, uh, on a weekly perspective and not actually zooming in on a one hour or even a four hour or a daily because the daily is very, very sloppy. So I, I, I would actually, and basically what we're, where the price is trading right now is trading right at the weekly, uh, right at the weekly buy setup right here. Uh, I like the fact that we closed above the 10 simple moving average and, uh, but we're still dealing with this whole resistance from, uh, the end of December. This is December. Uh, this is the last day of December, December 31st. And then this is January here, February. So we're still trading in, in this resistance, but I think it has something going for it. I'm not bearish on it. Okay. I'm not bearish on it. Uh, continuation higher, most likely into the 148 and 148, uh, 20 level. All right. Last but not least, let's take a look at copper. And, uh, from the weekly perspective, I see a topping tail here so i'm not very excited about this because first of all we came in we came in and we triggered a weekly so we were bullish on the week and then we pulled back but we're still we still have not violated uh, last week's low so we're trading within uh the prior week's range so this is not bad if this week we're going to trade above uh th this high and the high is actually 2.957 we trade over 2.957 you get a couple of ticks above that, and that's your weekly trigger that uh, may push the price higher back into three dollars and even higher into the, uh, into the uh, three ten, three fifteen, and three twenty. These are my targets for uh, for copper going higher. So uh, I'm still not bearish on it. There's plenty of support at this level that is coming from these prior pivot highs, and we had a very long digestive move here from July all the way into February. So finally we blast off in February. This is a nice solid uh, bar to the upside. Uh, really nice wide range bar. And then one, two, three pullback, still trading within this big, big bar. You can see that I have a line right here. This is my minor support zone. Uh, pullbacks into the 289, 286 and 285 to me look viable. So I'm still gonna, uh, still gonna watch um, um, this area uh, for a bullish setup. So I'm still bullish all the way into the 2.85. If um, if we're going to if we're going to see um, any kind of pullback this week, I'll alert you on our private Twitter feed and on public Twitter feed. Okay. All right, this is all for now. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, we are heading into a very busy week. We have uh, we have the FOMC meeting this week, and I I think that there are going to be a couple of more uh, Brexit votes underway this week as well. So it's going to be a very busy week in terms of news and econ. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention to you guys is that as long as we have financials on our side uh, in regards to the indices and as long as financials are going to push higher, I think that the market is not uh, done yet and is just getting started to push higher. So keep an eye on that. Also keeping an eye on the VIX. And uh, with that being said, thanks so much for tuning in. Remember that if you want to find out more information or trade with us, um, you could visit our website. It is tradeoutloud.com. Uh, you could trade with us uh, every day. Uh, we have a trading room. And also, if you want to uh, start trading, and if you want to, you know, start trading and, um, you know, become educated, we offer trading education classes as well. Thanks so much. Have a great week ahead. 
and uh, see you next time.